This show is made possible by the patrons at patreon.com. Many upcoming episodes of this show will be highly critical of popular design patterns that we're all quite used to seeing. However, before I get into those, I should make my own positive constructive statement. Over the years, I've developed a system, or a design pattern, which I use for designing strategy games. I call it the Clockwork Game Design Pattern. Just as every good essay starts with a thesis statement, every good game starts with a core mechanism. A core mechanism is an action that the player can take which expresses the heart of a given game system. A good example of a core mechanism is attacking to knock the opponent back in Super Smash Bros. A core mechanism has two parts. A core action, which is the primary thing that you do in the game. In a platformer, it would likely be jumping. In Super Smash Bros., it's attacking. The other part of the core mechanism is the core purpose. This is the reason that you do the core action. While the goal describes an end condition, the core purpose describes what you hope to accomplish with the core action, moment to moment or turn to turn. In Super Smash Bros., this core purpose would be knocking the opponent back. So when you combine the core action with the core purpose, you get attacking to knock the opponent back. As we all know, the goal is a thing that players are pursuing as they play. For designers, a good way to think about it is that the goal in a game is an anchor around which everything else revolves. The goal informs the player of how effective or ineffective any strategy or move is in a game. The goal should also be the ultimate expression of the core mechanism. In Super Smash Bros., you're attacking to knock the opponent back. So, knock him so far back that he flies off the stage is probably a good goal. Supporting mechanisms are additional mechanisms or rules beyond the core mechanism that support that core. They help to give the core mechanism nuance and complexity without competing with it. In Super Smash Bros., one supporting mechanism is the stages. These stages support the core mechanism, primarily by having pits, edges, and platforms that all facilitate and increase the complexity of the core mechanism. Another supporting mechanism in Super Smash Bros. is the damage percentage. This number increases each time the player is attacked, and it also determines how far back the player flies when attacked, so it very clearly supports the core mechanism, whereas something like a health bar that you have to deplete would not. Ideally, your game will only consist of these three elements. By sticking with this design pattern, we can start to pursue elegance. We can be sure that everything in our game absolutely needs to be there, and we can give good reasons for why it should or why it shouldn't. Really, what could be more elegant than a single mechanism, your core mechanism, creating most of your game's depth? We can make sure that our game is a tight web of mechanisms wherein every new rule is pulling its weight. By contrast, most video games are what I call patchwork designs. A bunch of elements somewhat slapped together with very loose connections to one another. When working this way, it's very difficult to find objective criteria for why something should be removed or why it should be added. If you'd like to know more, I've also written a book about it called Clockwork Game Design. Thanks for watching.